Well, China's space lab Tiangong-1 fell to Earth last night, breaking up over the South Pacific Ocean. Now, the station captured the public's attention over recent weeks after scientists around the world tracked its uncontrolled descent. Let's bring in Bob McDonald right now, who joins us from Victoria this morning. Bob, nice to have you in the program. So here you have Tiangong-1. Nice to have you. So here we have Tiangong-1 re-entering Earth's atmosphere last night. Uh, tell us what happened. Well, it uh, fell exactly where it should have fallen, in the South Pacific, where there are no people. That's where they, they call it the junkyard of space debris, uh, because they try to intentionally do that. Now, whether or not the Chinese were in control of their spacecraft, we don't know. Uh, the reports were that they were not. And uh, the problem is these things that are coming down, these large objects that are coming down in, from space, if they are uncontrolled, uh, you don't know where they're going to come. I like to think of them like stones that you skip across a pond. You know, you don't know how far that stone's going to go. Sometimes they really flutter a long way. Sometimes they dig in. And that's because there's a lot of unpredictability. If these things are on, out of control, they're tumbling end over end. You don't know how they're going to behave in the air. And even our atmosphere goes up and down each day, depending on how much activity there is from the sun. And that'll affect whether it digs in or skips. So uh, the fact that it didn't come down over a populated area is good. And uh, hopefully we'll be controlling these things in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, part of the problem here and part of the question, I guess, it has to do with the fact that uh, it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong here, it seems that ground control in China lost contact with Tiangong-1 uh, some years ago. How common is that? Well, it's uh, it's actually happened before. Uh, we've had an American space station called Skylab that came down in 1979, and pieces of it came came down over Australia. There was a Russian one called Salyut 7 that came down over Argentina, and in both cases, nobody was hurt. There were just little bits and pieces that came down, falling out of the sky. It's not like the movies. These things don't come screaming down as flaming fireballs and pound through buildings and make big explosions on the ground. It's just wreckage kind of raining down like somebody through the tailgate of a, a pickup truck off a tall building. They just kind of fall down. Now, I, w I wouldn't want to get hit by a tailgate, but it, that's the kind of thing. And it was a funny thing is that the, the town in Australia where it came down, it was in the outback, they fined the United States $400 for littering. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that's the kind of thing you're dealing with. Most of the stuff burns up high up in the atmosphere. So very little of it actually reaches the ground. The bigger threat is in space itself, because there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of bits of junk way out in space that are threats to other satellites and astronauts on the International Space Station. That is a far bigger threat than the stuff that actually reaches the ground. Okay, so bar far bigger threat hitting uh, the objects and the satellites, as you say, and the ISS that we have put up in space. So what's the strategy here? Is there any type of plan to clean up this type of space junk? No, there isn't, and that's a big problem. That's a big problem. These things are going in, in uh, all different directions. Some of them go around the equator, some of them go north-south, and they reach all the way out to 36,000 kilometers where all our communication satellites are. There have already been collisions between two of them, and when they hit each other, they're going so fast. They're going almost 30,000 kilometers an hour each. They totally obliterate each other, and that makes more space junk. Now you've got little tiny bits, and even a small bit, something the size of your finger, if it hits you, it has the explosive force of a grenade. So this, this stuff is just accumulating, and the problem is it's spread out over a huge area. So if you want to go up, yeah, the Europeans are talking about sending up little robots with nets to try to grab them and bring them down. Uh, the uh, Australians are talking about using a high-powered laser, so are the Chinese, to, to laser and shoot some of the little bits, but that would be a weapon in space. It's a real problem. What we need are international agreements so that anybody who puts anything up has to take care of bringing it down when it comes to the end of the lifetime. So far, that does not exist. That's what we need in the future so that the stuff doesn't accumulate in the first place. Bob, always great to talk to you about these things. Thank you. Okay, Michael. And that is Bob McDonald, the host of Quirks and Quarks on CBC Radio. He was kind enough to wake up early on this Monday morning in Victoria.